Okay, so now I want to talk about working with vectors in two dimensions, and then we can extend that easily to three dimensions. And um, this will be very useful going forward for pretty much every aspect of physics. Vectors are used to describe uh, many, many different things going forward in physics. So it's, it's very good to have a deep understanding of how to use them and how to work with them geometrically and mathematically. Okay, so let's say I have some piece of information. So this just says, I walk five meters northeast. That's fine. And this piece of information doesn't change at all if I move this over here. If I move it to the top left, it still says I walk five meters northeast. If I move it down here, it still says I walk five meters northeast. It doesn't matter where I move this. It contains the same information. Now, I can represent this information with a vector. So let's put this up here. So I walk five meters northeast. So I'm gonna represent this with a vector pointing northeast. So there's northeast, here's my vector, and we're gonna say that it is five meters long, and this is gonna be the vector V. We're gonna call that vector V. Or as a matter of fact, we'll use, we'll use R, we'll use R1. R uh, in higher dimensions, in uh, two and three dimensions is what you will most see for position vector. So if I walked five meters northeast, I moved from some point here to some point there. Now, just like with the words, I walked five meters northeast, if I move this around anywhere, the fact that it represents walking five meters northeast does not change. It is the same piece of information regardless of where I move it. All right, so let's say I have a second vector or a second piece of information. And this one is, I walk, I walk, three meters, uh, we'll say west. I walk three meters west. Okay, and that is gonna look something like this. It's gonna be a little shorter than the five meters and it's gonna be going in that direction. And this is gonna be three meters. And we'll call this R2. This is my second vector. I started somewhere and I walked three meters west. So these are just pieces of information. And just like the last one, it doesn't matter what I do with this, it still represents three meters to the left or three meters west. So now the question is, can we combine vectors? Can we add and subtract vectors? And of course we can. And the way we add and subtract vectors is by kind of imagining the words in between the two pieces of information and then. I walk five meters northeast and then I walk three meters west. That's how we kind of think about adding them. So the first step was to walk five meters northeast. So I take this and I go five meters from wherever I started. Maybe I started at this point right here. And then I walk three meters west. So what I'm gonna do is take my second vector and I'm gonna put the tail of my second vector on the tip of my first vector. And that is going to be my, uh, my final position right here. So after walking five meters northeast and three meters west, I ended up right here relative to wherever I started. And our solution, our solution vector is going to be the vector that points to the ending location from where we started. So we started here and I ended right here. So that blue vector, that's gonna be our solution vector. And we can think of the blue vector as, we'll call it R3 maybe. So the blue vector is R3 and it was the sum of R1 and R2 of these position vectors. So that's my solution vector. That's how I, um, <coughs> excuse me, that's how I can add vectors and get a geometric vector as a solution. Now we can also subtract vectors. If I wanna take R1 minus R2. So let's put our vectors back in their positions. Oops, I left my arrows there. So that was 
right here. And our red vector was over here. So let's do subtraction. So what if I wanted to subtract two vectors? So I want R1 minus R2, minus R2. Well, in this case, we still start with R1. So I'm gonna take my R1 vector and we just start with it. Now, I wanna subtract R2. So R2 normally would go this way but I'm subtracting, that would be adding, but I want to subtract. So what that means is I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So instead of my vector pointing to the left, when I subtract R2, it's going to point to the right. And so actually, let me do this. Let's make a copy of this. So that's R2. But if I'm subtracting, then I want it this direction. So that would be subtracting the vector R2, okay? And then our solution vector is, again, going to be whatever vector starts at the point we started at and ends here. And so that blue vector is our solution vector. And again, we can take this and move it anywhere and the information stays the same. Now, we are generally going to pick a origin point for our vectors in an actual problem called the origin point that just simplifies everything. But um, this is how we add and subtract our vectors here. Now, what we can also do is multiply a vector by a scalar. So, Let's say I have a vector right here. So this is just some vector and we'll call this vector V, so vector V. And let's say I want two times vector V. So I'm not adding another vector to it, I'm just multiplying it. Well, in this case, all I'm doing is doubling its length. I'm just doubling its length. So if I took this vector and I just doubled its length, Oops. Well, there we go. And I just doubled its length. That's going to be 2 times vector v. I didn't change the direction of the vector. I didn't do anything to it except make it longer. And I could do the same thing if I wanted 3 vector v times the vector v. Well, then I could just take the 2 that I have and then I could just add one more. And this vector is three times vector V. And so multiplying by a scalar is just, um, is just making your vector longer. Now we can also multiply by a negative scalar. So what if I wanted negative, let's say negative two times vector V, right? So negative two times vector V. Well, in that case, if I have a negative, I'm gonna take my vector 2v down here, and if I multiply it by a negative, all I'm doing is making it point in the opposite direction. Making it point in the opposite direction, which kind of make, which definitely makes sense when you think about how we subtracted vectors up here. We just add the negative, very similar to just how we add and subtract real numbers. So that's multiplying by a scalar, adding and subtracting. We can also represent a vector by its components. So let's talk about what exactly that means. So if I have some vector here, I obviously don't want to write out every time. This means that you walk so many meters or so many feet in a certain direction. So if this is some vector, if this is some vector, we'll call this A, we'll call this the vector A, and let's say it has magnitude uh, we'll just say it has a magnitude A. So this is the vector A and the letter A without the vector symbol is just some number representing its magnitude. Well, we can split this up into its components. We can say walking in this direction by A units is the same thing as walking to the right a certain amount. So that's, let's get a different color here. 
it's the same thing as walking to the right a certain amount and then walking up a certain amount. Oh, missed it there just a little bit. But that's this is our components. So these, we call these the components. This is the x component of A. So it's AX there that has magnitude AX. That's how much we moved in the horizontal. And this is AY. This is just AY. This is how much we moved in the vertical. And so we can represent A, the vector A, we can represent as moving so much, uh, some distance in the X direction and then some distance in the Y direction. And that ends us at the same point that vector A does. Another thing that's useful is the angle. If we want to figure out the angle of this vector with respect to the horizontal, or if we know the angle, uh, we can, excuse me, we can use the angle to uh, represent the vector in a certain way. So if, let's say we know how far the vector um, points, so how, how long the vector is, and let's say we also know the angle. How do we find AX? Well, we can find AX like this. The magnitude in the x direction is going to be a, a times the cosine of theta. And why is that? Let's, let's figure out why that is. a cosine theta, a is just the magnitude of our full vector there, a. Cosine, if you remember from geometry or trig, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's just adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, what's the adjacent side to a? Well, it's AX. So we have AX over, and the hypotenuse of this triangle, because that's what we've really formed here as a right triangle, <clears throat> excuse me, is A. The hypotenuse is this side A. So A cosine theta is the same as A times AX over A, but then the A's just cancel out, and we're left with AX. So that's how we find AX. And similarly, similarly, if we want AY, AY is just A times sine theta. It's just A times sine theta. And this is the same thing as A times, and sine, <coughs> sine is just opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side from theta here is AY, and the hypotenuse is still A, and so they cancel to just leave us with AY. So this is how we can represent the components of our vectors. So in full, if we wanted to write the vector A, if we wanted to write the vector A, we could write it as the vector AX plus the vector AY. And if we want to know how long the vectors AX and AY are, if we want to know their magnitudes, we get A cosine theta and a sine theta, where this a is the magnitude of the vector a. So that's this is one reason it's extremely important to always make sure you're denoting when you're talking about the vector quantity or just the magnitude, or just the magnitude. Sometimes you'll see the magnitude written like this. You'll see the magnitude of a vector a equals something. So we've just written it like that. All right, so this is how we work with the vectors and then uh, oftentimes you'll see them written in terms of unit vectors. So the unit vector is, uh, they're denoted by i hat and j hat. So i hat is one step in the positive horizontal and j hat is one step in the positive vertical. So finally, we can write our vector A, we can write our vector A as the magnitude of AX, that many steps in the positive horizontal direction, plus the magnitude of our vector AY, and that many steps in the positive vertical direction. And we're running out of time here, but once we do some examples, um, at the end of this unit, we'll see exactly how we can work with all these things.